Hi guys, welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. And today, guys, today I'm gonna be reviewing Boosh, Yellow Sky Revolt by Baptiste Pinson Wu, which I hope I pronounced better than when last I talked about this book. This is book one of the Chronicles of the Three Kingdoms, or Three Kingdoms Chronicles, a planned 10-book series um, by uh, debut self-published author. So this is book one of a 10-book planned uh, series. It is his, uh, it is Wu's debut novel, and it is self-published, and it is excellent. I, I know you got, you guys know I don't read a ton of self-published. Part of that is I'm so behind the actual traditional published books that I want to read. But I was first turned on to this book by Tori over at Tori Talks. I saw that she had, was doing a, um, a she was doing an interview with Wu, and this book was being talked about, and I was like, what? What? There's, you mean there's three kingdoms? There's a three kingdoms book coming out? Are you kidding? And I, I watched it, and I immediately uh, engaged in the comments talking about three kingdoms, and I immediately pre-ordered the book and read it as soon as it came in, even though I had other stuff that I should have been reading. I don't care, because it was very, very good. So before I continue, and before I say, without wasting any more time, I'm just gonna let you know, if you are a fan of Dynasty Warriors, if you are a fan of Dynasty Warriors, listen to me, look at my face. If you like Dynasty Warriors, or Romance of the Three Kingdoms, or Three Kingdoms Total War, or whatever it is, Freaking read this book. <laughs> read this book. This book is for you 100% if you have any enjoyment of Dynasty Warriors or the Three Kingdoms story as it is. Like, don't even don't even listen to the rest of it. Just, I mean, go play it and then, uh, or go read it and then come back and, and, and listen to me about it. So without wasting any more time, let's get down to business. Let's talk about Yellow Sky Revolt. I love this cover. I love like the theme because in Dynasty Warriors, the first mission is always the Yellow Turban Rebellion, no matter which force you pick. So the Three Kingdoms, the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, is a, a series of Chinese novels that was written in uh, the 1400s that is based on an actual historical record of third century uh, Chinese civil war, where the Han Dynasty um, broke up and ended up three kingdoms being founded, the Wei, the Wu, and the Shu. And I've been playing Dynasty Warriors since the PlayStation 2, since Dynasty Warriors 2, and there are nine now. I haven't played nine, but I, you know, and there's always different iterations of them. I play them all, and that is how I got interested in this, in this story. And I also played, um, Romance of the Three Kingdoms on, uh, uh NES, but I didn't know what any of that was. <laughs> so I became interested in this story, and I have Three Kingdoms over there, and I've read the first book, and I remember nothing about it, but there are a lot of names. Uh, and I, th reading this book and talking, uh, talking to Wu and to Kyle and to Tori about this makes me want to go read Three Kingdoms, and maybe that'll be on my list for next year when I read a bunch more historical fiction. And so Wu has set out to write a series of kind of more accessible, more story-like, with, with a narrative scheme, so Three Kingdoms, the actual one, is very, it's very uh, third-person omniscient with whatever character needs to be in at the same time, and it's very overwhelming with its names and battles, etc. What Wu has done with uh, Yellow Sky Revolt is make a more digestible uh, entry point into Three Kingdoms. The character, the main character, it is, it's told from first person, and it's got that frame narrative that uh, Justice of Kings does, that the Cicero Trilogy does, that the Warlord Chronicles do, where it is our, prote our, our protagonist, our, our main character, uh, Liao Hua, in the future. He's an old man, and he is recounting the story to the historian who wrote the original records of the Three Kingdoms that then the Romance of the Three Kingdoms was, was based on. And Wu has done a phenomenal job by choosing Liao Hua as the main character, even though, so in all the Dynasty Warrior games, Liao Hua, he, he doesn't have a name. I kill him a bunch of times. He's a face, he's one of the faceless, like, template co copycat officers because you never get to play as him. But he was a yellow turban and went all the way through the war. Some people think he lived to be like a hundred. He survived, went through the entire Three Kingdoms until the fall of, of Shu and the, and the uh, reunification under, under the Jin Dynasty. He survives the whole thing, and so that's a character to that is the character that we're following. So I had never I had never heard of Liao Hua before because again I don't know the name of the faceless officers, don't care. But this is a very very accessible entry point, and you can tell that uh, Wu has done so much research and it is so obvious. There are two parts to this book. The first part is about mostly the Yellow Turban Rebellion, and Liao Hua is a peasant in a peasant village, and Wu transports you to the peasantry, the, the, the countryside of third century China. The details are fantastic. Like it is, 
It is very detailed, very thorough. Like you feel like you are in that place. It's not like a, you know, a theater backdrop where there's like a painting of, of, you know, second century China behind you and the actors are just dancing around in front of it. No, this is a living, breathing world. And that alone is an achievement. Uh, Wu's writing style is, it, it flows, it, it does not bog you down. It is, you can feel uh, Liu Hua's voice in the writing, he starts out as a kid. He's like nine when he starts out, and he's obnoxious the way a nine-year-old is. But you don't hate him. You do root for him. But man, does he think he's invincible, and does he think he's better than anybody else at any at, at anything? And so you see the events that get him involved in the Yellow Turban Rebellion, which was this this kind of uh, religious, quasi-religious movement that swept the peasantry, opposing the Han Dynasty. And this was the original. Uh, rebellion against the Han Dynasty, and out of that, all the leaders of the leader of Wu and then Wei and then Shu were all involved in the Yellow Turban Rebellion, and so you can see, you know, the the, the beginnings of that fractured structure of three kingdoms. And so the historicity of this of this novel is is one of the main appeals. If you are at all interested in Chinese history, you 100% should read this book. Uh, we see both the strength and the weakness is that we see everything through Liao Hua's eyes. And so part of this is Liao Hua, being a kid, isn't at a bunch of these like interesting battles where that were mo like momentous in impact. He's not there, because he wouldn't be, because he's a kid. And so that is the weakness of telling it from this first person perspective in general, is that, you know, stuff happens off stage and you're like, well, that thing was really cool. Why is there only one POV in this? And, that, and, and that's just the trade-off that you get. But I think most, most of the time, it works really well. What I think it also does a good job of ex is explaining why the rebellion even started, how we got to the Three Kingdoms period, about how the Han is kind of ignoring the people. It is uh, growing fat on its own wealth and at the expense of, the, of the, the citizenry. And so we understand why people would join this rebellion, why they would think that they, uh, that they could even attempt to bring down the emperor. What he also does is, and what Wu says that he really liked in kind of uh, Cornwell's um, Warlord, Warlord Chronicles, is that the magic is very, like there is magic, but is it real? Isn't it real? Every magic kind of has an explanation. So you're, you're, you're second guessing yourself, like, is it real? Is it not? And I like that, especially involving the yellow turbans, which if you played the game, that, that stage is filled with like magic and boulders and like fire and wind and stuff. And it, it is more realistic and really is a better way to tell the story that's being told. But I'm not going to lie that I don't miss like crazy haired Zhang Jiao being like, the Han is already destroyed. The Han has already burned out. Like, you know, <laughs> crazy dude with a staff, like, blowing fire. <laughs> I love that guy. And so that's book one, and it is a credit to Wu that you can become invested in Liu Hua's story and in the the people that, the, the villagers from his village that get carried along and also the other officers in the, the rebellion, how he creates a relationship between Liu Hua and these people. I love Fat Ling, who is, he's just this guy from the village who ends up, you know, serving in, in this little peasant army. And they always call him Fat Ling. And, you know, you're always expecting him to be useless. And then he does something cool. I love that guy. And that's part one. So part one is really the, the mainly the Yellow Turban Rebellion. And then we see the introduction of Cao Cao, who, if you play the games, I hope you love or you hate, because Cao Cao is always portrayed in pop culture as this really sinister villain. He's called the Hero of Chaos. And here we see another side of Cao Cao. We see the poet side of Cao Cao. So while he was a warlord, an incredibly effective general, and a, a, a genius um, leader of men, he was also uh, an, an academic, an educated, and a poet. And it's part two that I liked part two slightly less. Part two is by necessity kind of a who's who of the Three Kingdoms period. It's a lot of them when they were young and they're all in kind of this school setting and they're all kind of classmates together. So we see a young Sima Yi who is, uh, hopefully you know who that is. And we also see a young uh, Chu Chu who is, uh, you know, he's the big fat dude in the little vest with the big hammer in the games who's like, 
You should never fight on an empty stomach. Are you the one who's been messing up our field? And here, it's... This part is not bad. I just liked it slightly less just because of... There's a lot of the, the schoolboy tropes where, you know, these people hate this guy for reasons. And, you know, Liao Hua becomes, uh, by necessary of the story, a little too involved in events that are happening to where sometimes I'm like, like, is he really this exceptional? But overall, I really, really like it. I love the, the cameos. I love the introductions. He does Jahadun dirty where, but he, he says that Jahadun, okay, so if you play the games, you love Jahadun. He's an awesome guy with the eye patch, uh, who's, you know, Cao Cao's right-hand man. Apparently, in the actual books, he sucks. Like, in the actual Remains of the Three Kingdoms, nothing he does succeeds. He sucks. And so, Jahadun does suck in this, and that makes me sad. I think my, my biggest problem with part two is I think the ending feels rushed, and that I wish the stuff that happens at the very end of this book happened at the beginning of the next book, because... It's some really cool, like, military stuff that seems to be over like that. It, it felt like, like, that's where he wanted to end book one, but I almost wish that that had been in book two and more time could have been spent on it. Because, again, Liao Hua isn't really there and everything happens very fast, and I would have loved a bigger explanation of that. For the most part, I don't have any complaints about this book. The one issue I will say uh, that I have, is, as Kyle touched on this in his review, is there's only really, like, one time that, that the writing felt too modern for the story uh, it was telling, and it says, Liao Hua at some, like, at two different points says, that was a major bummer. And nothing else really struck me except that it was a major bummer. It just really stood out to me as not something that would be in, in third century uh, AD China. But other than that, the writing is great, the storytelling is great, you have a really rich world, rich with history. I think that people who are not, if you are not a fan of the Three Kingdoms and you are interested in um, getting into a historical fiction in a time period that isn't normally talked about, which is always freaking Rome, I think this is a great starting point. I, there are a lot of names in this that I think, if you are not familiar at all, might be a little difficult to grasp especially if you're not familiar with Asian naming systems a lot, but I, I don't think it's, I don't, I don't think it is, it is inaccessible and not something you can work through. It just might be a little confusing to start with. But all in all, this is a fantastic debut. I cannot wait for the second book. I love this time period. I love the games. I love seeing these characters that I've loved for forever being put in a fiction narrative that doesn't like completely blow it up the way that freaking Lion of Macedon does. So, I absolutely recommend this book. On the Kingpin approval system, I give this book an excellent plus. And out of five stars, I give this I give this book four and a half stars. A fantastic debut, and I cannot wait for future installments. So guys, are you a Three Kingdoms fan? If not, who cares? Read this book anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, information about my Patreon and Discord is down in the description, and I'll see you next time, guys.